So today we are going to be exploring one of the cheapest and most efficient ways to water cool your graphics card. And guess what? It's not technically made for our graphics card, which makes this risky. So we're going to take our cheap 120 millimeter Acetec AIO that was included in our pre-built and use it in conjunction with the NZXT G12 and get the cheapest version of a custom water-cooled graphics card. And as a replacement for our old 120 millimeter AIO, we will be slapping on this Kraken X62. This thing is absolutely awesome, 280 millimeter AIO, and it will get our CPU overclocked to the max. Yeah. Yeah. To the max. Max. <laughs> now, like I said, this is a little bit risky because this bad boy is actually not made for RTX cards. So on the back here under GPU support, we got the Titan X, the Titan, and then the GTX line all the way down to the 570s. And then on the RTX line, it is compatible with the RX 480s all the way down to the 5830s. So this thing's compatible with all the old graphics card, but we're gonna be taking it to make our blower model graphics card run at its fullest capability. And we will have to do a little bit of custom modifications. The point today that you can use this thing with all of the new cards, as long as you're willing to make it work. Before we knock out this install, let's cover everything that comes in the box. We get our 92 millimeter NZXT fan, which mounts to the G12 bracket. We have two sets of mounting legs for the actual bracket to the card, and they are labeled for NVIDIA and AMD. Then we have the G12 bracket and all the required screws and whatnot for the install. Step one is disassembly and removing the old GPU case and heatsink cooling. Please make sure you have the correct size screw heads so you don't strip any of these screws in case you need to reinstall everything. We're gonna remove all the screws from the bottom and the sides in order to remove the protective cover. Once the cover is off, do a solid double check to make sure that all the screws holding the cooling heat sink are out. And then we're going to gently and patiently remove the GPU cooling heat sink. And of course, this thing's been fastened pretty tightly to the card for quite some time. So don't be surprised when it's a bit of a struggle, but definitely make sure that you are careful. I'm personally working on a $500 graphics card. So the last thing I want to do is warp or break the card. Finally, the heat spreader is off and I can remove all of the old thermal tape off of the VRAM modules and all of the thermal paste off of the NVIDIA chip. The fan is simple enough, just make sure it is pushing air towards the card to help cool the components. Now I'm gonna show you guys why they say these brackets in the G12 kit don't work for the NVIDIA RTX cards. And it's because when we try to line these up with the placement holes for the mounting legs, they actually hit some of the components and naturally we would not use it in this fashion. My solution is to cut the brackets and to make my own mounting holes in the G12 plate. A simple pair of snips remedies our issue entirely, allowing me to create four mounting posts for the G12 plate without hitting any of the onboard components. The next step is to get the placement of the post legs just right for a clean center mount. So I'm gonna be doing some lining up here of the AIO cooler to make sure that it'll be perfectly mounted in the center of that chip. Then I'm gonna tighten up the mounting legs from the bottom of the card. I'm gonna use an old tried and true method. I know the comment section is probably gonna roast me for this, but you can use toothpaste or petroleum jelly on top of the mounting legs so that it will mark the card for where we're going to be making our new mounting holes. Easy, cheap, and effective. We can see pretty clearly where we need to drill. Now, typically I would drill all of this on my workbench outside, but for video purposes, I'm gonna record it. Just please make sure not to do this anywhere around your graphics card. Last thing we need is metal shavings all over that thing and then the board getting shorted out. All right, a little bit of cleanup in this area and then we're gonna get it prepped up for mounting this water cooler. As far as thermal paste goes, I do not recommend using the pre-applied amount that you will find on brand new AIO coolers. Reason being is that CPU and GPU coolers don't use the same amount of thermal paste. GPUs actually use more and it is recommended to spread the paste thin and evenly across the entire chip. I also don't advise using liquid metal thermal paste either, but do as you wish. Now we're gonna place our cooler into the G12 bracket and carefully line it up with our new mounting holes and then no need to go crazy on the finger tightening or we will damage our graphics card. Just do a solid snug hand tightening and voila, we're done. Oh, but don't be a dummy like me and mount the AIO cooler with the tubes running towards the back of the graphics card. Yeah, that, uh, that sure would have worked. The tubes need to head towards the front of the G12 bracket so we can place our radiator with much more ease. I also use a VGA to CPU fan converter cable. Now this allows the pump on the radiator to be directly powered and controlled by the graphics card. No worries if you don't have one of these, you can plug the pump up onto a open fan slot on your motherboard. 
So where you want to mount your radiator is gonna be dependent on your case and your build and where you want it. But my personal choice was at the rear of my Cooler Master case with two fans and a push-pull configuration. All right, so stock temperatures on the RTX 2070 made by Zotac, even in one of the best cases out there for airflow. When we were running at max load on the GPU, we were at 79, 80 degrees Celsius steady. And then at idle, we were at 44 degrees Celsius. So with the G12 and just a simple $35, 120 millimeter radiator, we are at full load at 47 degrees Celsius. Yeah, our idle speeds drop down to 30 degrees Celsius. So that's a solid 33 degrees Celsius drop and then an idle drop of 14 degrees Celsius. So we just dropped our temps like damn near in half almost. Fits over guys. These are ridiculously low and healthy temperatures and we did it all for pretty damn cheap. So the G12 bracket is actually only 30 bucks. And then the AIO cooler was just a no name, but still name brand because it's made by Acetec. And that was 35 bucks. And then we used a little converter cable to let our GPU control the radiator. So that was $7. So essentially what, 72 bucks? Damn, 72 bucks? $72. $72. And I have ice cold thermals. And yes, for anyone asking who is concerned, all the settings were the same for both of the tests with the G12 bracket and with the stock cooling solution. So my next question was how much more performance headroom would we get overclocking with these lower temperatures? And we actually achieved a memory boost clock of 320 gigahertz and then a core clock of 170 gigahertz. Now this is coming from a plus 120 memory and a plus 110 on the core. So in the end, we did get some performance benefits out of overclocking from having lower thermals. And even though we ran a little bit higher clock speeds, we're still staying super cold temps. The max that I've seen on this card is 50 degrees Celsius. The only downsides that I see to this G12 modification kit, I would say are mostly cosmetic. You no longer have a protective cover as well for your card's backplate, and overall the card just looks naked. Undoubtedly, some people won't enjoy the visual appeal of the setup, but to me, I don't care. I am just in it for the performance aspect of this modification, but please leave your thoughts in the comment section below as to how this looks in our case. Now the pros to this would have to be the super cool temperatures, the cost effectiveness, the diversity on compatibility, and the fact that I know I could get this to work on any graphics card out there with a little bit of fabrication. And for the people who are wondering how much the Kraken X62 280 millimeter AIO improved on our temperatures over the 120 millimeter AIO, we are on an i9 9900K and we dropped from 60 degrees Celsius at max load to a 49 degrees Celsius. Killer performance on this cooler, great cam software supporting it. Excellent job NZXT on this Kraken AIO cooler as well as the G12 water cooling kit. I freaking love this thing. I think it's very innovative and I can't wait to see if they drop new models for the updated AMD and Nvidia cards. But that's it for me guys. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section down below. Like and subscribe if you want to support your boy. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Peace.